Hi Kamaluddin, how are you? I am good, sir. How about you, sir? I am good too. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Hi, uh, my full name is Sek Kamaluddin. I am from Purulia, West Bengal. Currently live in Pune, Maharashtra. I completed my B.Tech in 2019 from mechanical background with a 7.13 CGPA. After that, I am working some manufacturing and construction company. And uh, after that, I joined a all of, as a AV Tech support engineer. And here I got uh, some exposure about the software testing. So I joined a software testing institute to learn more about the software testing. Here I completed my manual and manual and automation part, automation using uh, Selenium with Code Java and some basic knowledge about the test engine. Also, I have basic knowledge in API testing. After that, I'm uh, currently I'm joining Shami Innovation and Technology. Here I'm working as a software test intern. So here is uh, my uh, basically roles and responsibility. I'm daily working on uh, regression testing, retesting, the, and uh, also reporting bug and track the bug. Also, I take the scrum call for our team. Also, I'm uh, part of the, our testing team as a team lead. So uh, that's my current. Great, great, wonderful. So do you do manual testing at your current company or you're doing automation testing? No, sir, it's a totally manual testing, sir. Manual testing. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. So in your resume, you have mentioned you are, you are doing test case generation and management and test execution. So can you explain how do yes, you sir. write the test cases? How do you design those test cases? Basically, sir, when I got any functionality, so hmm. first of all, Basically, which application currently working? It's a school ERP project. Mm -hmm. So it's an ERP based project. So first we explore the application. After mm -hmm. that, uh, when we understand the uh, functionality of the application, then we one by one uh, write the test cases. It means uh, uh, login functionality check. Also, when a uh, user uh, input the data, that time how they are getting the response. So this type of uh, test case writing using generally uh, we are using uh, MS Word. To write the test cases mm -hmm. and after that uh, we execute the one by one test cases to verify the expected result and actual results sir. okay okay great so uh let's say if you get this question in an interview so you can explain like uh, you are getting some requirement documents so as you were mentioning you are doing exploratory testing so it would be sometimes right not very often you would be doing exploratory testing Sir, but uh, may, mainly which project currently working here I before that uh, which team working they are uh, did not maintain any do documents oh, okay. so totally application we uh, me and uh, our team will first explore the total application mm. also after that we create one document to okay. understand the before that uh, any personnel working for so right. they are understand the functionality great so great it's then it's fine right so earlier if the team was working who did a handover to you they did not give you the kind of the documentation. So now your team is doing, you and your team are doing exploratory testing and now you are preparing a documentation. So this thing is good that you explain in detail, right? Okay. So you are preparing a documentation now. Yeah, that's good. Okay. So now, verified all aspects of, okay. So in your resume, you have mentioned about software development lifecycle and uh, it's okay. yeah so how do you how do you have this uh, sdlc in your uh in your project which are the aspects of uh, sdlc that are being followed right now SDLC follows sir basically uh in some days before we need some uh, basically when uh in our application means, uh, mm -hmm. when uh, parents are logging so they are did not get uh, any mail from the after the login the application so mm -hmm. we just suggest our uh, senior member, sir, this functionality required to, to our uh, project because uh, it's a help to parents to uh, track their children's activity and uh, also their performance. So mm -hmm. that time we development team to suggest that uh, create this functionality, then development team start their working. So first they are just a discuss to team member say this functionality. So they are first a design and uh, after that they are executed the uh, that's a process are not completely uh, mm. completed till now. That's the working. Mm -hmm. No, no, I'm asking about this point. See, you have written in your resume, right? Verified all aspects of software development life cycle maintenance, yes, sir, yes, sir. right? So how do you, uh, 
like is are, are you doing some kind of verification in this or is it a kind of no. a, yeah just a basic knowledge about the hdlc processor okay you have basic knowledge of hdlc okay so what is hdlc yes, which are the different phases of hdlc in hdlc different phases like a sir first we uh, uh, gather the requirement hmm. from the client in uh, client side after that we discuss our team member and then we execute the uh, design phase so architecture mm -hmm. has design the product architecture uh, product uh, architecture after that uh, development team was decided uh, uh, design design to execute for the development then development team uh, one by one uh, create the code and uh, create the application Hmm. as per the customer requirement after that uh, when development team complete that then development team uh, first done the unit testing then development team send to the testing team and then testing team will uh, test it and uh, after that release the cycle release the product right right so let's say if you get this question in an interview then you can explain in this manner is my screen visible to you yes sir hmm? so see there are six stages in stlc so first stage is planning and requirement analysis. In that stage, there are various activities happening, like planning is happening, defined. You will define the project scope. You will set the objectives and goals. You will do the resource planning. Then second stage is about defining requirements in which you will define those requirements. You will explicitly mention which are the requirements, which are the different modules that you have. Then functional requirement, technical requirement, and then the requirement will be reviewed. In the stage three, you have design. So in design, again, we, we will have high level design, low level design. In stage four, we'll do development. So which programming language it would be started. So accordingly, those coding standards would be defined, which version code control tool they are going to use. Those things will happen. Code review will start taking place. And stage five is the testing where they'll start manual testing or automated testing, system level testing. And last is maintenance. So deployment and maintenance those goes together so deployment of the code deployment of the product and release planning would be done and if any feedback is there and if anything is related to the product itself then accordingly the maintenance and next further release planning would be done right so these are the six stages of sdlc this is right so this you can explain in an interview okay so as DLC is done. Hmm. Okay. Now, can you give me an example of a defect with low severity and high priority? Low severity and high priority. Yes. Uh, uh, we when we open any e-commerce application, hmm. and there is a company logo. Hmm. That's a spelling mistake. Hmm. It's a low severity. But mm. high priority because it's uh, does not impact our customer business, but it's uh, impact our customer reputation. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It would be a low severity, high priority. Right. Yes, sir. Fine. So now let me take you to one particular place. Okay. Yeah. Now is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say that uh, there is a client who came to you that uh, they need to have testing on this Grow app, mm -hmm. right? So this is their uh, kind of a registration screen wherein you can either continue with Google uh, account or you can enter your email address and you can set up your account in this particular app. So can you tell me high level positive and negative test scenarios, how you will test this particular screen? Uh, high level, first uh, positive scenario, yeah. like uh, yeah. when user come to the continue with Google, that time mm. uh, our existing Gmail account, it's a showing or not, that's a verified. And uh, second, uh, when user enter their manually email address, mm. uh, sorry, uh, when user enter the email address, that time that's a take it or not. Sorry, when user enters the email address, then uh, means uh, when user try to enter the email address, that mm. box are working or properly not. First we check, okay. and uh, if it's uh, working, then we enter the email address. Then verify uh, continue button is uh, working or uh, clickable or not. Mm -hmm. And after uh, after click the the continue button, after that user get the OTP or not mm. for uh, login. 
নেগেটিভ সিনারিও ওয়েন ইউজার ট্রাই টু লগ ইন উইথ ইনভ্যালিড ইমেল অ্যাড্রেস দ্যাট টাইম অলসো সিস্টেম উইল গিভ আ পপ আপ আর নট দ্যাটস ইনভ্যালিড ইমেল অ্যাড্রেস অলসো উই ক্যান ইউজ দা ইন ইমেল অ্যাড্রেস সেকশন উই এন্টার দা ফোন নাম্বার দ্যাট টাইম হোয়াট আউটপুট গিভেন আওয়ার সিস্টেম দ্যাটস অলসো ভেরিফাইড and uh, also we verified the continue to continue with google when you click that uh, that time uh, uh, that's a button is working or not mm-hmm. also we check the close uh, cross button that's a properly working or not mm-hmm. right right also one more high level uh, we check the uh, front page it's uh, properly visible or not means mm-hmm. user properly see that uh, they are uh, any uh, did not uh, facing any issue to uh, read uh, reading correct correct Definitely. right okay so the test scenarios were perfectly fine apart from these test scenarios you can cover this particular text so this content this text this that is written here simple free investing that is yes, written sir. properly then you can see some yes. text coming up here and it is getting changed yes, so what yes. is the requirement of that text so you will ask the business analyst team at what particular time this text should be displayed and what are the different text that should appear and disappear from the screen so that's how you can come up with it see this particular half of the screen this you can do exploratory testing but in this particular screen you would need some depend you will be dependent on requirements you would need some kind yes. of uh, documentation from maybe customer or your stakeholder or client because you cannot certify let's say to today they want to uh, keep five to six suggestions on that particular web page that are related to stocks mutual funds etfs which are been displayed and all of a sudden they start showing up about uh, some ipos right then that is something that is not in the requirement so you will log them as a bug right yeah. and then you can also cover these particular links so terms and conditions privacy policy and tariff rates those six yes, you can sir. cover then you can also check opening uh, by opening the screen in other devices let's say if you take mobile device if you take ios or android devices then are you able to create account on those devices and then there are other options like other browsers like bravo browser is there or firefox safari edge browser so are you is So, uh, is the screen working fine on those other browsers as well right okay. so those things you can cover um yeah okay then one more scenario that you can add is about the performance or non functional testing let's say if you clicked on uh, uh, continue button after entering the email address so how much yes. time does it takes to move to the next screen right how much time yes. does it takes for next screen to get fully loaded All right so that's how that's you can pleasure. test then you can also test a kind of uh, concurrent testing let's say uh, there are 10 20 users together they are trying to enter the email address and click on continue button simultaneously together parallel right then you can see how is the system behaving response time yeah yeah what is the response of the website how is it behaving is it taking too much of time or is it handling those particular scenarios gracefully right those things you can cover okay now are you able to see this search box yes sir hmm? now let's say yes, you sir. have to give a high level estimation of how much time do you need to test this search box right so so can you tell me how much time would you take for that what would be your test estimation for the same sir search box uh, it's a take us uh, some time like uh, i did not say that uh, currently uh, it's a uh, take one days or two days because it's a uh, depend on total uh, functionality upper because how much uh, page will integrated with uh, this search box hmm, hmm. so it's a uh, totally depend upon the if i get the requirement means uh, hmm. in complete details about the application hmm. then i can answer that uh, that uh, this uh, search box uh, completed in one day or two days sir right right no no that's a good answer so you should definitely ask for requirements right and generally in an interview if you ask these kind of questions that can we have a proper set of requirements can we have some kind of documentation whenever these kind of questions are coming to you then interview interviewer will be happy 
that okay he has actually worked in an it company as a profile of uh, on a role of software tester itself that's why he's seeking for more questions because testers will always have questions right yes, sir. there are times yes, sir. when the requirements are you know handed over to them when the documentation is handed but still you will have questions because there are times when you will find some discrepancies that are happening between what is written and what is actually what actually you are seeing for doing testing right so one should not hesitate as a tester we should not hesitate for asking the questions right no question is a small question you should definitely ask this question so now let me explain you so this search box is uh, I'll, I'll tell you about the requirements right so i don't have the documentation handy but i'll tell you verbally that this search box will help you to make a search towards the ipos or stocks that you have uh, searched so far or in which you have invested so far and it will also help you with the search with the list of other stocks in which you can invest for example let's say if you have done investment in a medical stock then it will also help you to show you like which are the other stocks that are possible that you can invest on right apart from stocks it can also show you the mutual funds or ipos in which you can do the investment then there are other bonds that you can do the investment so those all things you can search here if you are looking for some kind of you know fi financial investment kind of thing those things you can search you can also search something related to insurance policies if you are looking for some policies which are available in the market for some amount of age group then that also you can search so this is the requirement now can you tell me how much time would you take to test this search box it's a uh, this type of testing sorry sir i can't no worries no worries so let's say if you get this question that you are supposed to give test estimation in an interview okay then how would you handle this question is you would first of all you ask the correct question you are looking for requirements right then you will cover various testing activities right now testing does not just involves that you will start testing this particular thing so what you will do first of all you will write high level test scenarios then you will write detailed level of test cases then in the test cases you will define what is the test data for what you are looking for right uh, and then you will see which are the high priority test cases so let's say if you have 20 test cases then how much time would each test case take so maybe 20 test cases are there some test case might take 10 minutes some test case might take 15 minutes so it depends on the complexity of the functionality so you don't have to tell the exact time whenever you are telling whenever you get this question of estimation you have to tell them that it depends on the complexity of the feature but you have to tell all these activities like like test scenario mind mapping technique you would be using to define how many test scenarios will come then test case writing test case execution that's how you can tell right so in interview time i did, uh, did not get any proper days mm -hmm. anybody asks so i can't say that any proper days mm. that's okay no? that's completely okay what you should tell is uh, these are the different testing activities that you should uh, you would be taking up to perform this testing because see when when someone will ask you how much time you would take to test this particular search box so it does not mean that you will directly start testing you will take some time for understanding the requirement you will take some time to explore the functionality you will take some time to design the test cases to design the test scenarios you will take some time to create the test data right so you have to tell them the range of days maybe three to five days maybe five to seven days don't tell the exact days or number of hours sometimes the candidates do tell okay i'll take two hours to test this but man would you complete writing test cases also in two hours and doing testing also in two hours because this is a new requirement you will have to first understand it right so don't uh, give the direct numbers like two hours or one day you can tell the range of days that you would take depending on the functionality that you want to test right so that is totally fine and that is totally understood also because in my current uh, company i'm also uh testing in the first project is a search bar module i first take it so mm. it's a uh, take a long time to execute so that's why i'm yeah it will such things will take a time because see first you will have to understand uh, what you need to test 
right then only you would be able to start and see in in the companies if they put pressure that you know such things should be happening in five hours or six hours then you can give them an idea about the different activities that we are taking care right it's not just about testing we have to document the test cases we have to design the test cases we have to execute those test cases one by one again when you are executing the test cases it is not that you will test only in one browser maybe there are some functionalities which you will have to test in multiple browsers multiple devices you might have to do compatibility testing you might have to do non functional testing like performance testing so those all aspects you should consider and then only you should give the estimation okay fine so this was about the grow app and okay what is white box testing white box testing basically uh, white box testing it's a uh, uh, when uh, testing the application that time uh, we have required to uh, understand the application code hmm. we have uh, knowledge about the code and uh, mm -hmm. internal in, uh, also it's a white box testing also done from the basically it is done from the development mm -hmm. team Correct. developer will done the white box testing right right and so you also white box testing we just check the basic functionality mm -hmm. that's a mm -hmm. properly working or not correct correct so what they will do is they the testers need to have the knowledge of internal structure of the code how code has been written what are the different functions methods defined in the code and then the white box testing can be performed okay now what is the importance of doing penetration testing why penetration testing is important sorry sir i did not remember that okay okay no worries so i'll, I'll explain you so first question is then what is penetration testing so let's understand first what is penetration testing so okay. let me share my screen so you would have read in the newspapers or you know in the articles or maybe in the news that their accounts the people's accounts are getting hacked someone else is uh, using their accounts right okay. so when whenever this hacking takes place so how how does it take place maybe the application or maybe the system was not secured right hence the people okay. or the hackers were able to break and they were able to uh, you know um, i would say they were able to uh, use the malicious softwares or they were able to you know uh, take out the money from that account so any any personal details or any money that has been taken or maybe the account gets blocked so what happens is those systems were not secured so now as a tester we need to do security testing we need to do penetration testing so penetration testing is also called as pen testing it focuses on finding the system or security vulnerabilities before they are exploited to the real attacks by the hackers. So let's say if the application is not live, the application is not yet released, it's not in the production. So in-house, you will be doing penetration testing. In-house, you will be checking whether the login, let's say the login screen is there. So username and password, those things you are entering. So password should be encrypted. There should be some encryption mechanism that should be followed. Maybe it is AES-256 or any other encryption that needs to be followed to make sure that that password is not revealed in an open text, in a plain text. Okay. So penetration testing is very important in many of the IT organizations. It needs to be done so as to ensure that the infrastructure or the softwares, those are secured and they are protected against the malicious attacks. Okay. So pen testing may be required by business insurers or regulatory compliance bodies for legal liability reasons. And this is especially true if the company does not update its information security policies. So let's say if there is a company who does not update their security policies and there are times when people don't even think about such things, but then their accounts get hacked, then they'll come to know, then they'll realize, oh, no, security policies are very important within a company. You know, so those things are very important. So hence, security testing plays a very vital role. Or you can say it is also called as penetration testing. It is known as pen testing. It is also called as vulnerability testing. Okay. So now, um, pen testing is done.
Okay, what is sanity testing? Sanity testing, uh, sanity testing basically after uh, fixing any bug, mm. we just uh, check the functionality are currently properly working or not. Means uh, uh, there's bug or uh, reproduce or not. Mm. That's the check in sanity testing. Right, right. It's also so, called as a plan testing. Right, right. So you will be doing detail level of uh, sanity testing. Whenever you get the release, right? That's how you will do. Yes. Okay. What is ad hoc testing? Ad hoc testing. Hmm. Sorry, I said just. Okay. No worries. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. What is ad hoc testing and when will we do ad hoc testing? Okay. So now. Let me share my screen. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, sir. Hmm? So now this yes, is sir. a banking website. And let's say in our region, in our country, this has been displayed in English local language. Okay. In yes, China, sir. it would be displayed in Chinese language. In Japan, it would be displayed in Japanese language. So let's say if this website is opening in India properly in English language, but in Japan, it is not getting open in Japanese language. It is getting open in English language only. So what would be the severity and what would be the priority of this defect? First of all, would that be a defect or not? Sir, it's a defect. It's First. a defect. Okay. Yes. And uh, it's a, we can say that it's a high severity and high purity bug. Because, uh, it's a, hmm. because it's a totally impact our customer business and a reputation, hmm. both. Okay. Okay. Now, let me change the question a bit. Now, let's say if there is a, this is a same website and there is a functionality in which you will get a pop-up first. That do you want to get this language displayed in your local language or in English language? And then if you select the Japan, been in Japan, you select the Japan as the language, but still it opens in English. Then what is the severity? What is the priority of the defect? Sir, defect and uh, severity and priority both are high hmm. because hmm. Uh, it's a uh, issue is not solved, sir. Hmm. Just got a pop up, but uh, it's the same. Same Customer issues. business and uh, reputation uh, both are down from this. Area. Right, right. So as the customer is not able to read the website in their own language then it's a bug okay now earlier scenario let's took uh let's revise the earlier scenario in which by default the website was getting open in english language okay at that time pop-up was not there right okay. in the second question pop-up was there so yeah it's a high severity high priority defect but in the first question where pop-up is not there and it's getting open in english language then you will go through the requirements again. You will see what is the default language that it should get open. Is it like across the world it would open in English and then you will get some kind of an option to change it to the previous language or to your local native language. Right. So that's how you can decide whether it's a bug or not. But sir, uh, uh -huh. I have one question. As a uh -huh. customer, when I log in, uh -huh. I... Basically, it's a, my URL is a redirect to the our country. Okay, okay. So, so you okay. So you are telling from the login scenarios. Okay, I was uh, thinking from this launching this website itself. So let's say if I launch this website, okay, and it is opening in the English language, and now yes. after logging, it is identifying that I am a customer, and maybe I have uh, selected a country as Japan, and that's why it is opening in Japanese language. But there also, if it is opening in English language, then it's a high severity, high priority defect. Right? Okay, great. Okay, Kamaluddin, I am done with the interview. Do you have any questions for me? Sir, uh, any suggestion? Me because right. sir, uh, it's a many time who uh, I'm completing course in last uh, year in May June. After that time, we start working in manual testing. So I just uh, totally it's uh, my first interview. Right, right. No worries. Your interview was good. You were able to answer confidently. 
you were able to analyze the situ situation and then you were answering the couple of questions like uh, penetration testing that you need to read uh, then ad hoc testing so ad hoc testing is nothing but it's a kind of a, a monkey testing when you don't have the requirement you need to test everything right ad hoc testing uh, it's called as monkey testing or uh, you know you don't have anything explicitly in the terms of requirements and you will test each and everything so that is nothing but ad hoc testing so one or two terms then about sdlc if they will ask then you will have to explain about those phases and various uh, approaches that they have the six phases that we discussed right then uh, defect priority severity questions are also fine yeah so rest all looks good apart from two or three questions here there right yeah. And sir, my introduction part is good or sir, any changes required in my basically means it's an, uh, too much long or short, sir? No, no, introduction is good. But yeah, you can further add more details that you were telling. So you are doing manual testing, right? So you can also start yes. explaining about the process. What is the process in your company? So maybe when you get some requirements or as of now, you are not having any requirements. So you are doing exploratory testing, right? And then you are creating those kind of artifacts. You are creating those kind of documentations for other people to refer to. So those kind of things you should highlight because you don't have requirement, but you are making sure that the future is not, uh, you know, the product or the project in which you are working that should have some requirements in the future. Right. Yes. So those things you should add. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.